Um, if I understand your question correctly, I would say this. The largest organized groups of charities in the world, over and over and over again, all around the world, organize themselves around religious groups. I don't think that that's a mistake, and I don't think that that's a coincidence. So that, in fact, if you disband the idea that we're doing this as a religious group, you will, in one stroke, undo a great deal of the good that happens in the world. So, no, I think that communities, which, by the way, without religions, I don't know where you get communities where young and old sit together in common purpose. It's very rare, especially in our atomized society. If you disband that, I think you get trouble. Christopher, without community, without Impl the labels? Implied, implied in what uh, David says is um, that a person exists who would say, now that I don't believe in God, I'll stop giving money to charity. I don't care anymore. I don't know, I don't think there is such a person. And if that were so, it would be a very strange religion that they'd been professing. Who will then, organize then good then works it, in the absence of religion? Not only that, but religion? why is it that in survey after well, survey, religious people do give more, and religious people you. watch less television and have used it's, drugs less this and use religion, alcohol this less. This is what religion is down to. It has it. social utility. It's very impressive to me. Oh, okay, because good. It's, often, it's very often the first thing. When we debate with Catholics, they always change the subject to charity right away. With Jews, it's usually a little later. You just okay? said that they... And with Muslims... <laughs> And, and, with just, Muslims, yeah. and with Muslims, it's, it's at the all end. the time. <laughs> because what, what else can they... They don't want to defend their faith. But you just said but the opposite. Like, they you just, just said that they don't, they don't want to you defend, didn't believe they you would do it. They don't want to defend their faith. They don't want to say... They, don't, they feel uneasy talking about redemption, salvation, all this kind of thing. But, but look at the good work we've done. If you talk to the Mormons, they'll say, you, should, you may not think much of Joseph Smith. And I say, you got that right. Said, but, boy, you, you should see our missionaries in Peru. So government will do the work if What's religion this, does not. Excuse me, government? What, what has this got to do with the existence of God or the validity of religious claims? It has nothing to do with it. Social which utility. is why it's always introduced yeah, as a time-wasting tactic. Wait, 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 wait. No, don't applaud that. Nothing to do with it. He just... <laughs> but... All right, all of you who applauded, I just want to ask you this. If Christopher says to me, God doesn't exist, and I say, but we do good things, he's got a point. But his previous comment was, people who don't believe in religion do good things. In response, I say, in response to the question, people who believe in religion do good things in a to a greater extent. And then he says, well, why aren't you talking about whether God exists? You made an argument against the social utility of religion. Well, said, uh, I then made an argument for have, the social wait, utility of religion, not, and you not, turned I theological have, on me. I have me. not conceded that it's to a greater extent. Let me give you an example. With the great uh, Brazilian photographer, Sebastião Salgado, whose wonderful work on the primary producers of the third world, you ought to, you ought to be familiar, the great, like one of the great photographers. He's the ambassador, as the UNICEF calls it, the United Nations <coughs> Children's Fund, for the eradication of polio. I went with him all over Bengal, we, went, we, we got it down to the point where, except for a few bits of Afghanistan and uh, El Salvador, polio was almost gone from the world. Mm. It could go with smallpox. Not a small thing. Done by UNICEF, a secular, or, secular organization. And we nearly got... It was, a date was announced, but we were pretty sure polio would be gone. And it spread back. Yes. Because largely Muslim groups in Nigeria, and also in parts of Bengal and Afghanistan, told people, don't go get your children inoculated. It's a, it's a plot by scientists and Jews and others to sterilize Muslims. And that plus the Hajj, that plus the wonderful devotional habit of, of going to Mecca all the time and taking all your diseases with you has meant that polio is back all the way across Africa now. So I'm not going to have it said that in order to do good, you've got to be more religious than someone it, it, who... It's complicated, uh, but I want even another question, if I may, sir. All the practical evidence yes. is the other way, and it's nothing to do with the claims all the of practical faith. Evidence. Nothing. Okay. Sir. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, first comment to Mr. Hitchens. Thank you for a very well-argued book. Oh. You and I are in violent agreement. <laughs> uh, Appreciate second, it. it seems to me, n not to talk about religion and faith for the moment, but the question as to whether God exists. Let's not duck that one. Uh, it, seems, it seems to me that to discuss that subject, one needs to have some scientific knowledge. My question is very simply to Rabbi Wolpe, uh, and please take a second to think about it. Uh, my question is, 
And I've asked this of priests, reverends, and rabbis many times. We're ready. <laughs> My break. question is, if no one ever explained God to you, not in writing, not orally, would you have figured it out? Thank you. So, first of all, I think that it's important to understand that the idea that there's an inbuilt opposition between scientific knowledge and belief is contradicted by some very prominent scientists, including Francis Collins, who's the head of the Human Genome Project, who wrote a book in favor of God, Owen Gingrich, who's an astrophysicist at Harvard, who wrote a book talking about his belief in God. I always find it interesting that people assume that the expertise they have is necessary in order to make the assertion that someone else makes, um, and if they don't have it, then they can't speak about it. I grew up in a home where one of my brothers is a uh, PhD in bioethics and the other one is a PhD in developmental biology. They talk science all the time. I think for a layperson, I have a reasonably good grasp of, uh, of some sciences. And I would say, absolutely, I can make the assertion that God exists precisely because the criteria that is used for a scientific assertion is not used for a religious assertion. Nobody asks, a, in the same way that you make philosophical statements that are not subject to scientific criteria. If you, for, if you ask yourself, what does the world look like to something that's not human, to a bat, to an ant? The answer is, we can't possibly know that because we can't unknow what we know and we can't look at the world through different eyes. So if you ask me, would I have come to this belief that wasn't explained to me? My only evidence to answer that is, yes, human beings did. And either it was explained to them by God, which is what I assume, or you would come to it naturally. So, yeah, I think I would come to it naturally, but can I prove that to you? No, it is precisely one of the many examples of unprovable questions that we nonetheless can feel deeply about. My point, though, is that early on... Is this a debate, or is this is a early on... Uh, let, let me put it to Christopher. Yeah. Do, do you Sorry. assume that everything will want... one day be solved scientifically, or does it matter to you? No, all, all the science is going to do is keep on teaching us how little we know, and multiplying the distance between our, our own attainments and, and our desire to master these matters. The, many of these questions will remain undecidable, which is the way I like them. Religion and science can coexist in the same person, that's true. Now, I know Francis Collins. Um, he writes, he's brilliant on the genome, but if you've read C.S. Lewis, you don't need to read him on religion. It's unbelievably naive. Sir Isaac Newton was an alchemist, um, a, a very strong, if rather superstitious Christian. He thought the Pope was the Antichrist, might have been onto something there. <laughs> but a very, very, very weird, full of very weird beliefs. I thought if you knew the measurements of the old temple, you'd know more than if you understood gravity. Alfred Russell Wallace, who did most of Darwin's work for him, was a spiritualist, would go to table wrapping sessions, listening to burblings from the beyond. Um, Joseph Priestley was a Unitarian and believed in the phlogiston theory. Couldn't that be a but late It's really problem? only until, I would say it's only until Albert Einstein, not, not until, I mean, Albert Einstein, that you get a scientist who's also essentially a philosopher of pure mind. That's the great breakthrough. And now you can have private beliefs and be a, a, a scientific person, but no one says, my science right. helps to vindicate my religion. No one says that anymore. That, that's not doable. I, I want to get to more questions, please. Yes, I have a question for both of you regarding um, the existence of a universe, universal morality. My yes. question for Mr. Hitchens, is there one? And if so, where does it come from? And my question for the rabbi is, if there is one, and it's, for example, in the 613 mitzvot, how do you personally uh, pick and choose which ones to follow? Because I notice, you know, you're not wearing tzitzit and some of the other um, prescriptions. So if it's I might universally... Be. They might be under my shirt. <laughs> well, there are... Uh, I won't go there. Yeah. But um, <laughs> generally speaking, can you be a good Jew and not follow right. the 613 if that is the prescription for universal yeah. uh, morality? Well, the most commonly taken... Um, universal, absolute moral statement is what's sometimes called the golden rule, um, which, well, Rabbi Hillel says, don't do to another person what would be repulsive to you. Others say, do as you would be done by, just putting it the other way. It's in the Analects of Confucius. It's very few societies don't have it. Um, so I think that's what we'd have to take as the nearest to an absolute. It's obviously subject to various relativities, uh, alas. For one thing, it's only really as good as the person saying it. Um, 
should I not do to Charles Manson? 